I mean, what I love most about this parade is it brings together the whole of Brooklyn, not just West Indians. So stay tuned with us as we go on the ins and out. Whether you're tuned in from Philly, Miami, Baltimore, you're going to feel like you were right here the whole time, right here on Natural Typical News. Okay, so it's time to break down the history of this joint. The Labor Day Parade is based on the pre lenten celebrations originating in Trinidad and Tobago. A certified boss named Jesse Waddell is credited with bringing the celebration to New York City. Jesse was a West Indian leader and social activist who began throwing parties indoors in the 1930s as a way to celebrate Carnival. In Trinidad and Tobago, Carnival takes place from February to March, which meant it was straight brick up here. So Jesse decided to move the celebration to the summer streets, and after forming a small committee, she got the permit to host the first parade in Harlem. This parade was lit until the 1960s, but as with anything, people can't just seem to come for a good time. Violent fights and bottle throwing ended up causing the demise of the Harlem Caribbean Carnival, but everything happens for a reason, as you know. Many Caribbeans were already relocating to Brooklyn where it sat, which made it the perfect location for a new parade. A Trinidadian man named Lionel Rufus Gorin obtained a permit to host a parade on the blocks around his house until 1971 when the West Indian American Carnival Committee was formed. It was this committee that worked tirelessly to establish the parade you see today on Eastern Parkway. So without further ado, let's see how their hard work paid off. Carnival costumes were made to mimic and parody the French upper class. There were many characters featured at past carnivals, but in modern times, most people prefer the beaded and feathered look. In the 18th century, French settlers threw elaborate masquerades to celebrate before Lent. The enslaved Africans who were excluded picked up this tradition and paired it with their own culture using drums, singing, and of course, dancing. They called this festival Cambouillet. Cambouillet had a big influence on the music as well. In the 19th century, the hate mass government tried to stop the party by banning percussion instruments. Oh, they really thought they did something with that. But they only assisted in creating a new instrument, the steel pan. that is only signature to New York culture is a nutcracker. A nutcracker is a beverage made of liquor and sugar drink, like Kool-Aid. Many people sell them all over the city, most popularly on the subway. healing spirit made to protect the village from evil. In Trinidad, the Jumbi is said to protect revelers as they enjoy the celebrations. Taking in the festivities as well. 
It's a tradition that I don't see going anywhere soon. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Natural Typical News, and I hope that you join me again next time for some food, fun, and what? History, bitch. All right. See you next time. Bye, friends. Bye.